Good evening. I'm Dagan McDowell. And I'm Sean Duffy. Welcome to the Tuesday edition of The Bottom Line. No, it's Wednesday. Wednesday edition uh, of The Bottom Line. <laughs> what day is it today? Yeah. The Wednesday edition. Well, we know this. Politics can be one nasty business. With every election, you see candidates fighting off rumors, fighting down and dirty with low blows. But as we get closer to this election day and Democrats see their little switcheroo at the top of the ticket, ain't getting them where they thought it would, the rhetoric and the lies are getting lower and lower, louder and fouler. And their scare tactic? Clinging to General John Kelly's characterization of Trump as a Hitler-admiring fascist, whipping up that into a frenzy. He does not want a military that is loyal to the United States Constitution. He wants a military that is loyal to him. Donald Trump is increasingly unhinged and unstable. And in a second term, people like John Kelly would not be there to be the guardrails against his propensities and his actions. Those who once tried to stop him from pursuing his worst impulses would no longer be there and no longer be there to rein him in. Perhaps the Democrats feel this way because this is how they govern. By having America's leaders reined in, just look at Joe Biden. I better not start the questions. I'm in trouble. Am I allowed to take any questions? <laughs> <laughs> any, any, anybody here? Is that? Stop I'm not supposed to take any questions, but go ahead. But we've seen this game before. And at this point, it's tired. It's insulting to our Constitution, acting as though one man can single-handedly take down America's democracy. And it's a slap in the face to the American voter. Voters who are looking for a president who will solve America's problems created by those very Democrats you just saw. A tough economy, an out-of-control, wide-open border that's draining America's resources, health care, the list goes on. And on and on. And just how out of touch have Democrats become? They've even made an enemy out of unions, specifically any union leader who dares not to back them. And instead of portraying them for the working people, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, actually prove it by showing it. Something is wrong, and I've stated this time and time again. If 60% of our members are leaning Republican, then it's up to the Republicans to figure out why they're voting that way, uh, Democrats to figure out why our members are voting that way, instead of pointing fingers and looking for excuses. And breaking this hour, Kamala Harris's closing argument in this election will be delivered at the Ellipse in Washington, D.C., the same place where Donald Trump delivered his speech on January 6th. Joining us to react, Trump 2024 National Press Secretary Caroline Levitt. Caroline, great to see you today. Uh, Kamala Harris stood outside the Veep's residence with that stilted indignation act like she's some sort of preacher. Uh, delivering a dose of morality to the American people instead of being the root cause of the very hardship and suffering that the Americans are dealing with right now. She's been a DA, an AG, a senator, and now a vice president, and she's got nothing to run on but name calling. Mm -hmm. You're exactly right. Kamala Harris has lost the plot. She came into this race after the Democrat Party staged a coup against Joe Biden as the candidate of joy, the candidate of change. All of that was a bunch of baloney. And now she has resorted to the Democrat Party's instinct of being the party against President Trump rather than the party for the American people. And Kamala Harris is now regurgitating the same old and tired and twisted attacks against President Trump that we've been hearing for eight years, comparing him to Hitler, which is an egregious, disgusting lie to come from a leading candidate for a major party in the United States of America. Kamala Harris calling President Trump a threat to democracy. That same divisive rhetoric is what has led to two heinous assassination attempts on former president's life. And here we have Kamala Harris saying it again and again. But it's because the Democrat Party don't have policy to run on. Kamala Harris doesn't have a record. She's been a failure of a vice president, the worst in our nation's history. And so this 
This is her closing argument to the American people. But guess what? We're going to stay focused, and President Trump will too, focusing on the problems that Kamala Harris created and how Donald Trump is the only person that can fix them. And that's what the American people care about. You know, Carolyn, I think this strategy in a different cycle could work, again, just attack your opponent. But in this cycle, there's real financial stress, real financial pain across uh, many different uh, economic categories in America. And they want real solutions. And again, Kamala Harris, who doesn't lay out any policy, any ideas on really how I can fix that pain you feel, America, and just attack Donald Trump, when Donald Trump actually has a record to run on. They saw four years of how great his economy is. You guys have to be delighted that this is the way the last two weeks of the campaign are going. We are, and we're delighted that Kamala Harris continues to sit down for interviews because every time <laughs> she opens her mouth, she proves to the American people that she's unfit to serve as president of the United States, and she has no real solutions to fix the problems that she created and the American people are feeling in their everyday lives. The American people are not buying these egregious lies about President Trump because they had four years under President Trump, and our economy was booming. Unemployment, mortgage rates, interest rates were a record low. Gas was $1.50 a gallon. We the most secure border in American history. There was no war in Ukraine, no war in the Middle East. All of that has changed because of who? Kamala Harris. And that's why this closing argument by her is a losing one, and it will be proven to be a losing one on November 5th. One of the articles that we mentioned at the top of the show, it appeared in The Atlantic, claimed that President Trump was disturbed by the cost of the funeral for slain veteran Vanessa Guillen. And he, that he also disparaged her. That was the claim in the article. There have been immediate denials from those who were in the room when Trump allegedly mm -hmm. said this, including from Mark Meadows and Cash Patel and Chris Miller. And notably, Vanessa's sister has spoken out, posting on X, uh, the Atlantic is, quote, exploiting my sister's death for politics. It's hurtful and disrespectful to the important changes she made for service members. President Donald Trump did nothing but show respect to my family and Vanessa. In fact, I voted for President Trump today. There is nothing, I think that what we saw with this article and how it was picked up by the regime media, and uh, members of the campaign, there is nothing that these Cretans, Caroline, won't do and nothing that these Cretans won't say to preserve their power and then uh, attack those who threaten their control. <laughs> It's pure evil. And let me set the record straight. The Atlantic piece is unequivocally false. It is a manufactured hit piece against President Trump 13 days ahead of an election. There are multiple on the record story sources within this piece saying that these f fake allegations about President Trump never happened. As you mentioned, even the sister of this slain soldier, and God rest her soul, came out to say that this story is false. And this is the same fake news outlet that ran the suckers and losers hoax four years ago that the mainstream media also ran on, which was never true, and they regurgitate that lie to this very day. These people have no moral compass. They are driven by their hatred for Donald Trump rather than their love for this great country, and it's pathetic that the people who wrote this piece and now are rewriting this piece and talking about it on cable news all day, every day, call themselves journalists. They are not. They are left-wing activists who will do anything to tear Donald Trump down. But guess what? They've been saying these lies about him for eight years, and President Trump is more popular today in 2024 than he has ever been in 2016. He's leading in every battleground state, and we're going to stay focused on winning this election. And this is the, uh, the, the, the media that's so concerned about misinformation and disinformation as they espouse misinformation and lies uh, by the bucket full. Caroline Levitt, it was great to see you. Thanks for being with us. Good luck in the last two weeks of the campaign. Thank you, guys.